Okay, so greetings, uh, welcome to today's class. So just a quick recap of where we stopped in the last class. So we were looking at you know how to uh, choose the gear ratios of a multi-speed gearbox and uh, we discussed that typically the gear ratios are uh, decided by various uh, performance criteria given a, a prime mover characteristics that is an engine characteristics. So uh, one of the main requirements that uh, is used to choose the gear ratio is what is called as gradability. Uh, so that is indicator of the uh, steepest slope that a vehicle can climb on at a given constant speed. So gradability is defined as tan of theta is max where theta is max is this angle of the steepest uh, slope right so that the vehicle can climb or is expected to climb. And uh, when the vehicle is climbing on this uh, slope the significant uh, resistant is the resistance or the load that the vehicle needs to overcome is a great resistance W sin theta is max. Uh, since it is uh, going at uh, relatively lower speeds so we are neglecting aerodynamic drag however we can include rolling resistance. So there is something else called starting gradability where uh, we expect the vehicle to just start from a slope then inertia also uh, comes into play. Right. So we will be looking at continuous gradability currently and we saw that uh, typically you know when we want to go on a grade uh, we wish to engage the first gear and we want to uh, operate the engine at a point near to where it delivers the maximum torque because we need maximum thrust to essentially overcome the gradient. So using that idea we essentially balanced out what the engine will provide which is on the left hand side of this equation to what are the loads that need to be overcome which are on the right hand side of this equation okay. So we have matched the two. So that is the first requirement and that is where we stop and then like I define something called as a wheel longitudinal uh, slip ratio uh, which is uh, during traction uh, is given by uh, this formula. Uh, so typically it is represented as lambda, some people will call it as kappa, s and so on okay. So during uh, traction or forward uh, there is a during providing a thrust to the vehicle right. So the wheel slip ratio is defined as r radius of the wheel times angular speed of the wheel minus the longitudinal speed of the vehicle divided by the uh, product of r w and omega w okay. So Typically when a pneumatic tyre contacts the tyre road interface it sticks and slips. So essentially we do not have a pure rolling motion okay. So that means that V is not equal to R omega you know in the case of a pneumatic tyre. So the uh, wheel slip ratio quantifies that phenomena and uh, during traction it is uh, essentially defined in this manner. And as we discussed for a pure rolling wheel V will V equal to R omega so this lambda will become 0 in the limit and the other extreme case is when a driven wheel is stuck in a pot pothole full of let us say mud then we apply traction and the wheel will keep on spinning at the same place right. So R omega will be finite however V will be close to 0 so the other limit will be 1 right for what is called as a spinning wheel. So if we use this equation we get the longitudinal speed, uh, speed as uh, R w omega w times 1 minus lambda so this is where we stop. So let us uh, continue from uh, here okay. Now if the ith gear is engaged okay so let us say we have a n speed gearbox in general so and we are engaging the uh, ith gear with the engine speed being omega e okay. So at, at some engine speed omega e then we can use this above equation to get the corresponding longitudinal speed as r w right uh, omega w times 1 minus lambda. Now the question is that how, how is omega w related to omega e right. Omega e is going to be sorry omega w is going to be omega e 
if we recall the definition of our gear ratios right from the uh, engine output we engage the flywheel and the clutch together and that goes to a primary gearbox whose gear ratio is going to be NTI right. So, because like we are engaging the ith gear. So, we divide by NTI. So, this is going to be the speed at the output shaft or the primary gearbox. Then we have a final drive. So, whose gear ratio is ND. So, we divide by ND and this is going to be the speed of the wheels angular speed of the wheels. So, that is going to be the equation. So, this equation would be used later by us ok. So, this equation relates the uh, longitudinal speed of the vehicle to a given engine speed ok when a particular gear is being chosen. Now, if the maximum vehicle longitudinal speed let us say we call it as some V max it has to be achieved when the engine speed is let us say we call it as omega max right. So, this is close to the speed at which the engine delivers the maximum power. So, we have already looked at the power speed and torque speed characteristics of a typical IC engine. So, we do not get constant power output from an IC engine, uh, we have the maximum power at a particular speed all right. So, omega max uh, is close to the speed at which uh, the engine uh, delivers the maximum power Okay, so, let us say that is omega max and the highest gear with the gear ratio N T N being engaged okay, then. So, typically you know like when we are going at uh, maximum speed let us say on a highway right we are cruising at the maximum speed on a highway what we typically tend to do we tend to go to the highest gear right and we want to operate the engine close to where we get the maximum power right because when we are going at maximum speed let us say on a highway uh, there is go going to be hardly any inertia load the main loads are going to be aerodynamic drag and rolling resistance. And grade resistance is not going to be significant. Yes, if the highway is flat, there is very negligible grade resistance. But even if there are small ups and downs, there are going to be small amounts of grade resistance, not to the extent of what we encountered in uh, the requirement of gradeability. Okay. So consequently, you know, like we engage the highest gear and we use this equation to get a second equation. Okay. So, then what happens we just use this equation V max is going to be equal to R w omega max divided by N t n in d times 1 minus lambda. So, let us call this equation as equation 2 ok. So, we have got equation 2 by considering the uh, requirement of maximum vehicle speed ok and uh, essentially uh, making use of the fact that when, when, the, when we want the vehicle to go at its maximum speed we are going to engage the highest gear or the nth gear in a n speed gear box all right. So, now we can immediately observe that we have two equations one from the gradeability requirement where we want the vehicle uh, to be operated when the first gear is engaged and one a maximum speed requirement where we essentially engage the nth gear right. There are two equations but then how many unknowns are there? We do not know nt1 we have to find n t n we have to find n d 
So essentially we have two equations and three unknowns right, so we are not done yet, so we need to figure out how to uh, address this problem right and get the first cut values of these gear ratios. So for addressing that let us first consider a 4 speed gearbox, we will consider to other variants shortly okay, so to begin with let us consider a 4 speed gearbox. So then we need to determine the values of NT1, NT2, NT3, NT4 and ND okay, so we need the values of these parameters right, 4 primary gear ratios and 1 final drive ratio. Now what happens is that typically this is just a convention, the fourth gear is taken as a direct drive. As we observed even when we are discussing uh, the transmission layout right in a typical gearbox uh, the in the fourth gear you know like the input shaft is directly connected to the output shaft or there is a mechanism by which the speed of the input shaft and the output shaft are made equal okay. So this implies that NT4 is typically equal to 1 right, if this were the case then are we able to solve this problem, yes right, if NT4 were 1 then we can use equation 2 to obtain the value of ND right, because we are given the maximum speed specification right, we are also given the engine speed at which we want the maximum speed, maximum vehicle speed. So we can use equation 2 to calculate ND because now small n will be, so if we consider 4 speed gearbox that means small n is 4 right, so NTN will become NT4 in equation 2, so NT4 is 1, so we can find ND. So once we find ND <coughs> then we can use equation 1 to find NT1 right, so then equation 1 can be used to calculate the value of NT1 okay, so that is how we use equations 1 and 2 okay, in the case of a 4 speed gearbox, please note that we are doing basic calculations to get the first cut gear ratios you know like so. Okay, so now what have we done? We have we know the value of NT1, we know the value of NT4, we know the value of ND. The question now becomes what happens to the intermediate gear ratios, right? So, question that we need to ask ourselves is the following how to determine the values of the intermediate gear ratios okay, so because we do not know NT2 and NT3 yet right, how do we do that, in order to do that we revisit the uh, engine characteristics, so let us just uh, revisit the characteristics of a typical uh, IC engine, the torque speed and the 
power speed characteristics. Let us say torque speed is something like this, this is our torque and power speed is something like this. Okay. So, let us say uh, the point where we get the maximum torque, let us say we call it as some omega t, the point where we get the maximum power you know, close to that we call it as omega max. Okay. So, now imagine us driving a car. Okay. So, let us say we start from rest, of course, we engage the uh, clutch, we press the throttle and then like we want to synchronize the motion of the engine crankshaft on the wheels right through the transmission right through the drivetrain components. So, now let us say we start somewhere close to the point where we get the maximum torque. Now, what is going to happen as the speed of the vehicle increases, the in, we are in the first gear right, the speed of the engine what to say increases right and then after some speed where the engine power reaches its maximum, if we still continue to operate the power train in the same gear, we will see that the engine is going to drag, right. Why? Because if we exceed and go to the right of this region, the torque also decreases, the engine power output also decreases. So, the engine is not delivering enough energy to meet the demand from the driver okay, based on the loads that are acting on the vehicle. So, then what we do? We change to the second gear and by and large during this gear change, the vehicle speed more or less remains constant. It, yes, it may fall down slightly because the power train is briefly disengaged, but you, we can neglect that variation. Right? So, let us say we essentially come to the second gear what is going to happen? The engine speed is going to fall because the vehicle speed is still the same. So, if we go back to this equation, right. So, if we if the, if the vehicle speed is still the same and the value of N T 2 is going to be lower than value of N T 1. Right, when we change the gear, so we can immediately see that omega e will drop. Now, the question is that where do we want omega e to go, right, by design? So, obviously, I would want omega e to go from here to close around about here because from the point where we are delivering the maximum torque, sorry, maximum power to the point where I get the maximum torque, maximum torque means it will enable me to get the maximum thrust right because we are starting from rest and accelerating. So, I would want to go to the speed engine speed where I get the maximum torque right and then we do this once again. So, we keep on accelerating the vehicle speed keeps on increasing the second gear, we, clo we reach close to omega max then we switch from second to third gear this is what is called upshifting right there is uh, going from a lower gear to a higher gear when we upshift from the second gear to the third gear what do we want same thing we want to come back from omega max to close about to omega t so essentially we want to operate the engine while operating the vehicle in this speed range and that this physical uh, motivation or requirement is going to help us in figuring out the intermediate gear ratio. So, <coughs> consider that the gear is upshifted from i minus 1 to i okay, without loss of generality in a n speed gearbox. Okay. So, 
the basic idea is to make the power train operate in such a way, manner that the engine is operated between omega t and omega max okay so that is the uh, basic idea okay hence when the gear is shifted from i minus 1 to i at a particular vehicle speed we have <coughs> what we are going to do is that like we are going to make use of this equation okay once again we are going to uh, come back to the equation relating speed and uh, the vehicle longitudinal speed and the engine uh, rotational speed okay so what's going to happen the speed is going to be almost the same now what will be the vehicle speed when we are at this point in the i minus 1 gear that's going to be equal to rw omega max divided by nt i minus 1 because we are in the i minus 1 gear times nd times 1 minus lambda right we are making an assumption that the slip ratio more or less remains constant need not be but to make a first cut calculation we assume uh, that to be the case then that has to be approximately equal to right because the speed can drop a little bit but we are going to neglect that variation so that is going to be equal to r w omega t divided by n t i n d 1 minus lambda. So, I hope everyone can understand the motivation behind this equation. So, what does this equation give us? So, it gives us if we simplify this equation it essentially tells us that n t i divided by n t i minus 1 is going to be equal to omega t divided by omega max. So, almost going to be close to okay, approximately equal to omega t by omega max. So, uh, we are typically given an engine right uh, we know these rated speeds that is the speed at which we get the rate of torque and the speed at which we get the rate of power. So, omega t and omega max are known to us. So, what does this give us for any given i in the gearbox the ratio of two successive gear ratios are the the ratio of two successive gear ratios will be the same ok. So, this implies that the ratio of two successive gear ratios is the same. So, okay, any two right that is important right. So, you take let us say i goes from 1 to uh, so, or 2 to n minus 1 the way, way uh, 2 to n the way we have used the uh, index okay. In this case you know like uh, the way we have used the index you know like i goes from 2 to n in an n speed gearbox. So, that we go from first gear to nth gear right. So, we see that the ratio of any two successive gear ratios in the multi speed gearbox is the same okay using this argument. Then what do we call 
such a sequence of numbers to be so that implies that the gear ratios are in geometric progression. Okay. So, the set of gear ratios are essentially taken to be in geometric progression. So, what does that give us? Hence, we take any two pairs of successful uh, successive okay, gear ratios. So, n t 2 by n t 1 equals n t 3 by n t 2 equals n t 4 by n t 3 that is going to be equal to omega t by omega max and that is going to be let us call that as k subscript g okay, some parameters k subscript g right. Okay. So, this will uh, immediately tell us that now if I multiply n t 2 by n t 1 with n t 3 by n t 2 with n t 4 by n t 3 what will I get? I will get k subscript g to the power 3. Now what is going to happen? We can immediately observe that n t 2 n t 2 n t 3 n t 3 cancels. So, what are we going to be left with? k subscript g the parameter is going to be equal to the cube root of n t 4 by n t 1. Okay. That is the implication. So, we can immediately see that k subscript g can be calculated using the values of n t 4 and n t 1. Do we know those values? Of course, we do right? because in the example that we are considering, uh, we are considering a 4 speed gearbox n t 4 is anyway 1. Have we determined n t 1? <coughs> of course, yes. right? We use the uh, what to say equation for the maximum torque to determine n t 1 after we use the equation of our maximum speed to get n d. So, we know the values of k subscript g. So, this implies that the values of n t 2 and n t 3 can be calculated. Right? Once we know the ratio, what is n t 2? It is k subscript g times n t 1. What is n t 3? It is k subscript g times n t 2. That is it. Right? can be calculated. Okay. So, <coughs> this is the idea. Right? So, if you have if one has a 4 speed gearbox, uh, the idea is to essentially take the fourth gear ratio to be 1, okay? then use a maximum speed requirement to calculate the value of n subscript d. Then what we do is that like we use the ma equation for maximum torque to calculate the first gear ratio. Then we uh, consider a case where the gear ratios are in a set of or are, are in uh, so the set of gear ratios are in geometric progression. Then we essentially calculate the intermediate gear ratios by calculating this parameter k subscript g. That is it. 